Welcome back. The police marine unit and members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force are still searching for Terrence Davis, who, according to reports, attempted to swim to Baker's Bay after a vessel he and two other males were on capsized near Guana Key. He is now considered missing at sea. According to police reports, the men were reported missing after they failed to return from a diving expedition. Two adult males were rescued in waters near Guana Key on Friday. Preliminary reports indicate that on Thursday, the 12th of October, Shortly after 8 a.m., the men went diving while on a white 26-feet vessel with a green bimini top and a 225-horsepower Yamaha single engine. After failing to return, family members grew increasingly concerned. A search and rescue effort was immediately launched with authorities successfully locating two of the men on a capsized vessel drifting in waters about 26 miles off the, northern, off the northeastern end of Baker's Bay. Both males were transported to the mainland and taken to the Marsh Harbor Clinic for medical care. The whereabouts of the third male, Terrence Davis, remains unknown. Presently, search continues, and uh, hopefully they are able to locate him and uh, ease the attention and stress of his family and loved ones. Prime Minister Philip Davis traveled to Rome, Italy, where he met with Pope Francis at the Vatican on Saturday morning in a private audience. That meeting was followed by a meeting with the Cardinal Secretary of State of the Holy See. Fred Mitchell, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, is also traveling with Prime Minister Davis and explains the purpose of the visit to see the Pope. Prime Minister Philip Davis uh, met with Pope Francis on Saturday at Vatican City. They discussed first and foremost climate change. Pope Francis, who is the leader of the world's one billion strong Catholics, the largest Christian denomination. What are the sy uh, synergies with the church leader? The Pope has just issued an encyclical called Laudate Deum, in which he reminds us that the Bible injuncts us to be good stewards of the earth and reinforces the point that the industrial world has, has abused the earth and we must take action to save the planet. The Prime Minister agreed to work with the Vatican at COP28 in Dubai to uh, raise our collective voices on climate change, which for us is existential. The Prime Minister repeated the message before the Reverend Delton Ellis, who had a party of 46 pilgrims with him who were all treated to lunch and a reception at the Bahamas House in London on Sunday, where we are in transit to Ottawa for a meeting with the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The Canada CARICOM Summit, which began on Sunday and ends on Friday, October 20th, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will chair the first ever Canadian CARICOM Summit to be held on Canadian soil, along with CARICOM Chairman, that's Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skirt. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell went on to discuss a little bit of what this CARICOM meeting will focus on. Once again, as with the Pope, the issues will be Haiti and climate change. We are also now concerned about the bloodshed in the Middle East and have joined the CARICOM consensus in calling for an end of hostilities there. It is more important than ever that our collective voices are heard on all these matters. A number of the CARICOM summit goals is to highlight the strong bonds between CARICOM and Canada while prioritizing other goals including increasing trade and investment, promoting multilateral collaboration, fighting climate change and exploring ways to improve access to financing for small island developing states here in the Caribbean. Nearly 100 applicants turned out for the MSC Ocean Key Job Fair on Saturday at the Department of Labor on Carmichael Road. MSC, in conjunction with the Department of Labor, hosted the job fair with Labor Director Robert Fackerson telling JCN News that MSC Cruise Line has expanded operations and is seeking to make a few new hires during the month of October as they expect to open their new feature theme park in December. Acting Assistant Director of Labor Simone Thurston says between now and January, MSC Ocean is seeking to fill over 200 positions. We're partnering with MSC. They have about four, over 40 odd positions available, um, mainly lifeguards. They need IT managers. They're looking for landscapers, house persons, or house even. Um, so, Chef, it's a number of vacancies they are trying to fill at the moment, and these are positions that they need to have filled by now and December, January. 
Ocean Key sits some 20 miles south of Bimini and was used to mine white aragonite sand for diverse industrial purposes, but has since been redeveloped as a private island dubbed Ocean Key MSC Marine Reserve for MSC cruises. Giving remarks at the recent FinTech D3 Bahamas event, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator Ryan Pinder, talked about the importance of the regulation of the FinTech sector, especially in the wake of the FTX collapse, noting that there are well-respected FinTech businesses such as D3 Bahamas, their main sponsor, OKX, that continues to operate from the Bahamas, retaining confidence and trust in the jurisdiction. We recognize that the components of fintech move and evolve so quickly that we shouldn't view it as a single component in and of itself. We should view it as a transformational fintech industry where we want to continue to innovate and again, continue to lead from the front on a daily basis. The Bahamas leads the way in international regulatory compliance in the fintech space. Of note, the DARE Act and the guidance and rules that the Securities Commission promulgated allowed the Bahamas to be compliant with recommendation 15 of the Financial Action Task Force. This specific recommendation pertains to virtual asset service providers. And I might make note, we became compliant on recommendation 15, which addresses anti-money laundering framework for virtual asset service providers after the collapse of FTX. Not before, but after, which shows you that international regulatory institutions respect and agree on what we are doing and recognize that an infant developing industry that may have a failure is an indicative of the framework in which they are operating within. Attorney General Pinder went on to explain that the fintech sector is starting to see regulations that were often associated with traditional financial services. They are now making their way into the fintech sector. He expanded on the exchanging regulations of the Financial Action Task Force, bringing fintech regulations in line with traditional financial services. The FATF recommendations incorporate requirements for the regulation of the virtual asset service providers. These VASPs need to carry out the same preventive measures that traditional financial institutions and banks would have to carry out now, such as customer due diligence requirements, record keeping, filing of, uh, of suspicious transaction reports. All of these things that come from traditional finance have now been put in place to deal with cryptocurrencies, digital assets, and virtual asset service providers. These are all intended to ensure transparency of virtual asset transactions and keep funds with links to crime and terrorism out of the crypto sphere. So that's what they'll tell you the intent is. Anti-tax evasion, anti-crime, anti-money laundering. Countries are expected to license or register virtual asset service providers and supervise the sector in the same way it supervises other financial institutions. While boasting of the Bahamas' pioneering feats, which include the introduction of the DARE Act, Attorney General Pinder explained that international organizations ultimately rate jurisdictions based on how well the consumer is protected. However, he said a key proponent is striking a balance between being within international regulations requirements without stifling progress in the sector. And finally, from the WNBA, John Quell Jones and the New York Liberty live to fight another day after defeating the defending WNBA champion Las Vegas Aces 87-73 in a do-or-die game, and that was game three of their best of five championship series on Sunday. The Aces still lead that series two games to one. The Aces still lead that series two games to one with Game 3 set for Wednesday night at 8 p.m. In the victory on Sunday, John Quell led the Liberty with 27 points. She had eight rebounds as well, shooting 10 of 15 from the field, including four of seven from the three-point line. Bahamians playing in the NBA tonight, preseason action continuing. Buddy Heel and the Indiana Pacers, they'll host the Atlanta Hawks at 7 p.m. Buddy and the Pacers are 0-2 on preseason action. Also tonight, Eric Gordon Jr. and the 2-1 Phoenix Suns will host DeAndre Aiden and the 1-2 Portland Trailblazers tonight, 10 o'clock on NBA TV. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.